Time for another guy's stuff. What are we making, Justin? We are making corned beef and cabbage and oxtail soup. And the oxtail soup is a 400-year-old family recipe. And most oxtail soup uses wine, which we're going to use. But this one, because it's an old Irish recipe, is actually going to use whiskey, too. Ooh. So let's prep up the kitchen and get started. All right, so corned beef and cabbage, what's going in it? Well, corned beef, obviously. Um, potatoes, cabbage, and onion. Now, we got the water starting to heat up. It's going to take a little while. But most importantly, Jameson's is going in it. How much? Two cups. Should add just enough flavor, and the whiskey will act like wine. It'll help break down the meat, break down the... the the fat and the proteins and help coagulate and so nice yep that should be very good corned beef and cabbage is really simple it's just a matter of laying everything in so the first thing you add is the corned beef it takes the longest to cook then you add the potatoes finally you add the carrots the onion and the cabbage last so you got the water and the salt in there what are you going to do next um wait for it to come to a boil we're going to add the corned beef after that along with two cups of jameson's how long uh Till it comes to a boil, or for how long are we going to boil before we add the next uh, ingredient? Yeah, till the next step. Uh, probably be about, I give the corned beef about an hour before I start adding everything. Uh, this is a pretty hefty chunk too, so this is uh, almost four pounds. And general rule with the corned beef, I like is about an hour per pound. Cool. So, and potatoes take, uh, we could probably actually wait, you could probably wait about two hours because it's a bigger piece of meat before adding the potatoes. Uh, they'll only take about an hour to cook down, get that nice soft uh, texture to them. And then after that, just carrots next and the onion and then the cabbage last because it cooks the quickest. So it's like a big crock pot. Yep, it's a big crock pot is all it is. Uh, what people don't realize is when you think, when you start thinking about food, especially a lot of foodies think, oh, this gourmet meal or this is this ethnic dish and you go to these high-end restaurants. Ethnic food is actually poor people food. It's whatever was around and whatever you could use, whatever they pulled from the earth, and like leftovers. But we'll get into that more when we talk about the oxtail soup. Cool. What you got in there? These are leeks. Now these are going to go for the oxtail soup, which I guess probably be a good time to start talking about oxtail soup. So as we were talking, as we said earlier, ethnic cuisine is actually poor people food. It's whatever they had available. The nobility, they would eat the the good hunks of meat, the roasted, the you know, the roasted ox itself or the cow. So what was left over the the common people would use to make their food with. Well, oxtail soup is like that. It, it's exactly what it is. So it's we're using actual oxtails and uh, I'll show them to you in the next segment because they're coming up to room temperature. It's important when you cook when you're cooking red meat, bring it to room temperature. One it's not going to get that gray look to it. It's going to brown really nicely. So what we have in here is about three tablespoons of oil. I'm using canola oil. Um, we're just heating it up. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring the oxtails in. We're going to put them in there. Get them nice and brown on each side. Then we're going to add some leeks to it and um, some, yeah, probably a, a, some sage and a few other and mainly coarse ground pepper is the big deal with this and what we're going to start doing is we're going to start creating that brown kind of uh, charring on the bottom of the pan well that's the good stuff that's you want that and then we're going to use uh, a burgundy a, a real cheap burgundy i'm a big proponent of cooking with cheap wine and uh this is great because Let's face it, it was it's it's a commoner's dish. So you're not cooking with great wine, you're cooking with whatever wine you could. And then we're gonna also add the whiskey to it. That's gonna deglaze the pan. So I'm gonna finish chopping up the leeks and then uh, bring in the oxtails and we'll introduce everything. One of the things we didn't mention before, one of the extra seasons I put in my corned beef is, and it's starting to come up to a boil now, is I use um, aged black peppercorns and just muddle them or use a mortar and pestle, break them up just a little bit to release some flavor, but it's gonna add, it really helps bring out and give a nice edge to it. Cool. So, and then just kosher salt. So, 
So we're adding the oxtails, and what I'm also doing is I'm adding, I'm going to use a stewing beef. Because, well, it's a nice, cheap meat, and that's really what you want to use when you're making soup. Now, oxtails are not cheap, not by any stretch of the imagination, but back in the day, they were. They were nobody wanted to eat this stuff. You know, the nobility didn't want it. Now it's a delicacy. And so just trying to get these to brown up in there. We're going to end up removing these actually from the heat there in a second. Because we don't really want them in here all the time. We just want to get some of that. Just want to get them brown and that's going to add some flavor in here. And you can see they really are a tail. So. Ah, we're back. You got to go on an angle. There we go. So <coughs> what we're doing is we brown these. Let's still cook it up a little bit. And just lightly season them with salt, pepper. It smells like breakfast sausage. It smells amazing. But you also find breakfast sausage to be amazing, I know, Brian. All right, can you get in a shot inside here? So this brown stuff in here, that's the goodness. That is the, that's the magic right there. So we got a little bit more of the oxtails to add. And as you can see, they, they really are tails. I mean, they're hunks of tail. They're real fatty. And when you're doing stews or soups, you want that. One, that's what's going to give you, that's going to give you the flavoring that you want. That's going to flavor, flavor. Exactly. Add a little bit more oil in here. You want to be careful adding oil um, only because it does reduce the temperature of the pan a little bit. But we'll get this in. Then we're going to add the onion. We're going to add the leeks. And that's really going to be the last bit of flavor we're going to do. We're going to add these until they're a nice golden brown. We don't want them truly sauteed. We don't. You know, we don't want to train the mush. It really doesn't matter. So, if they do. I mean, is an overcooked onion ever a bad thing? It's kind of like an overcooked carrot. It doesn't happen. All right. So, what we got here is I'm removing the stewing beef now. Now, the reason I like using stewing beef with this dish, um, one, it's a good filler. Um, very supplemental. But this is how brown you want the meat. You really want it cooked. And, you know, there's some chunks left in here. That's fine. Um, we're going to put this in the oven. That way it stays warm. We're going to reintroduce that later. But you get a shot inside this pan. This is the good stuff right here. That's all that fat and marrow and everything just collecting there. And now we're just going to start adding our flavor points to it. And Flavor, flavor. That's a piece of oxtail right there. Mm. Mm. So good. I think that's a penis. All right, so these are leeks, and they're probably my favorite of all onions. Um, they just have a great mellow flavor to them. And uh, these, this is actually two leeks, and they're really coarse chopped, because I, I really, it's one of the few onions I like the texture of. So we're gonna get these going. We wanna get them turning brown in there. And then we're gonna add Just a little bit of a little bit of white onion, just very little bit. That's a whole onion chopped up there. We're probably going to add about a quarter of it to it here. That's going to add a little bit more flavor to it, and then I have to apologize. My pepper grinder broke after several great years of service to me. I just haven't gotten a new one. And you always want to season high. It creates good coverage. A little more salt helps break things out. Who cares if it gets everywhere? That's so, what she said. That's what, yeah, exactly. That's what cleanup's for, right? Oh, again, that's what she's for. Cut that out later. <laughs> but anyway, so here we go. You can just smell this. 
Brian's gonna kind of get in here and get, get an image, get you know, just a look at what's happening inside of here. Yeah, there may be a piece of meat left in there. It's not imperative. It comes out. It's just gonna cook down. This is that brown that we're gonna want it to get to. We're we're getting it there. And what we're basically doing now is we're starting. We're making the stock that we're gonna use for the soup. So. It's always better to make your own stock than to buy it. I mean, I do have some supplemental chicken stock, low sodium stuff, if I have to add to it, but you gotta get that all nice and go oh, in Low sodium, hey now, this isn't a healthy living obsession video. <laughs> this is guy stuff, baby. Yeah, well, <laughs> we gotta take care of ourselves or we're not gonna be uh, making many more of these. Let's, you gotta take a look at the corned beef here. So this has been in for about an hour. And you can see it's just starting to break down. It's got that nice brown color to it. Now, corned beef, generally your images of it being pink, but we did put two cups of Jameson's in here. So that's really helping to absorb and take on different flavors. So next up, we'll be adding some carrots to this, if I can find them. Ah, carrots. And, you know, there's a... We were talking about it just briefly before. There's about timing in a lot of things and how you layer a dish to cook it and to the to get the flavors right or the textures. But to quote one of my favorite chefs, Anthony Bourdain, and I say it all the time, is an overcooked carrot really ever a bad thing? We're just gonna throw the carrots in here. And they're really big. I we cut them up because we want this to be a hearty meal. Um, if you're familiar with beef bourguignon, it's a very similar dish. It's almost identical. The French just came up with a better name for it. So, we'll check back here in a minute. Probably about another 20 or 30 minutes of time lapse. and We'll be uh, ready to start actually creating the soup itself. Or the, the finish off the stock. We'll be back. Chop the garlic. Yep, and it's actually because Brian and I were talking, I totally forgot to add it before I added the the water. I added about six cups of water to that, and you can just see how it's shaping them. Now, we brought it back to medium heat. We're going to be introducing the oxtails to it again, and uh, the whiskey, and the wine. So, now, this stock, you can actually, you can do ahead, because it takes about four hours for this to cook and then you gotta add the the barley and everything else to it um, but the stock itself will last um, you can do it you can do a do ahead on it um, I'm gonna add the the wine and the whiskey in a minute um, and again it was just in the talking process you normally want to add the wine uh, first before the water then add the whiskey, and that really helps to glaze the pan nicely. Uh, right now, this is really becoming a stock, and we'll be adding our barley to it, which is the final ingredient, really. So, okay. All right, so we're back, and you can see here I've added, I've reintroduced the oxtails and the stewing beef. I've turned the heat up to high because we're going to get that really going. Corned beef is at a, a good boil, so we're going to start adding the potatoes to it. And like I said, you know, you can't overcook any of any root vegetable, in my opinion. Um, so, and pretty soon, once this gets up to a boil, we're going to add the whiskey to this. Now, Brian and I were talking, and we're going to forego the wine on this one round. And I just want to keep it the whole St. Patrick's Day theme and the whole concept of it being, you know, whiskey and the Irish, and so just adding the potatoes and let that cook for another hour. So, so once we have it at this point, it's just uh, sit back, drink, and chill for an hour. Uh, yeah, and then we're gonna add the uh, cap. The well, I'm gonna go ahead and put the onions in here again because, like I said, it doesn't really matter. It's all a flavor factor at this point. So the cabbage is the only thing left. The cabbage and carrots together are the only thing going to be left on this. And we're going to add the carrots in about an hour to this one. Um, and 
This is going to take about three hours. And the last thing we'll end up doing is adding the final part of it, which is the barley. Here you can see this. This is important right here. See this? This is that coagulating fat that we're talking about. And that's the flavor that you want. And that's why when we add the whiskey, and what we're going to end up doing with this is we'll kind of take some of that off at some point. So, but, yeah, this, uh, this is huge. Now, you can scale these recipes down, obviously. I'm cooking for about 10 to 12 people today. So, using my huge pots, this one in the corner here, this is my usual big pot. And then this is my super duper pot, which you guys haven't seen me use yet because I don't have the need to cook for two weeks for myself. Right. <laughs> um, again, you can make this stock and keep it. So that's the, the nice thing about making a large amount of it. You can keep it for two to three days. So if you want to use it or you know pre pre make it one night and use it on a on a Friday, use it on a Sunday, um, anything like that, or just for time reasons. So uh, as soon as this gets to a boil, we're going to add two cups of Jamesons. Um, if you don't drink it all first. This is true, because we did start with a fairly large bottle, and it's um, gone, kind of gone. <laughs> we, uh, we, decanted some, we uh, decanted some of it. What's that, French for drank it? Yeah. Um, so, well, here's to, uh, here's to the meal. So we're back, and this is the oxtail soup. This is the stock. It's boiling. The meat is just... Breaking smells down, good. it smells amazing in here. I, we got the corned beef back up to a roaring boil. It smells like a restaurant. I think it smells better than most restaurants, personally. All right, so now two cups of Jameson's. Now, when I add this, we're going to add it kind of slow because it's going to start reducing the temperature in here, and we want to keep the boil going. So we want to add this really, really slowly. That's what she said. That's it. This is it. It you just don't jam this in. So I there. heard that's how you like it. There we go. And you know, you can see I'm keeping the boil going. <clears throat> it's not roaring, but so there's the whiskey added, and that's going to come back up to a boil, and then we're going to take it down and simmer it. Yum. Oh, now you can smell that whiskey starting to cook in here. That's just water. Um, now we're going to add the carrots to the corned beef. And a little hot. A little hot. And just spoon them in. Dump them in if you really want. We're at about maximum capacity on these pots. In these stock pots. So the nice part is the only thing we have to add next is the cabbage to this. And really all you want it to do is steam anyway. So and you notice we dropped the temperature of the water down so that's going to increase cooking time. So you got to keep the corned beef boiling. So. There you go. So we've got that added. And this is right back up to a boil already in here. Just take a look at these oxtails, how they're, they're reducing down. That meat is becoming so tender, it's going to fall off these bones. Now, there's two ways when you serve this, because we're going to be adding barley later to this. But when you serve this, you can leave the bone in and the hunks, and just let your guests grab a piece of it, and then tell them afterwards that they're eating a tail. Um, <clears throat> or you can chop it up and just blend it in and never tell them. But, I mean, the point is, it is oxtail soup, so everyone knows what they're getting into. But, I'm going to keep that going. And we may need to add water to this, and it's an, it is completely acceptable to cook the barley separate. Um, get it almost done, and then add it. You can do that, especially if you don't have a huge stock pot. I think after this one, Brian and I both need to consider much larger stock pots. What do you think? <laughs> He's bobbing the camera, yes. So... One more drink for me. We gave this, the, the uh, oxtail soup some. I think I should have some. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're breaking up the cabbage to put it in. 
And uh, as you can see, it's reduced a lot. So we're going to wind up having to add some more water and bring that back to a boil. Now normally I like to hit the cabbage on something to break off the this core piece, but it's just not behaving. So we're just going to take our chef's knife and get in here and cut it out. That is some thick cabbage. Yeah, it is. So there, the course out. Not all the way though. Yeah, there's a lot of core to that. And when I do the when I do my cabbage, I'm just I'm all about fourths with it. I just think it creates such a nice hearty, you know, cooking environment for us. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add this first. Actually, we may not have to add too much more water to this. But I'm going to add just a little bit more water to it. Please don't go my sink right now. You can get a shot of that oxtail soup cooking up there. Next thing we're gonna be doing with that is we're gonna add we're gonna add the barley to it soon, and this is gonna bring the temperature down, so it's gonna have to come right back up to a boil. And that's what takes corned beef so long to cook, is that it has to be boiling. So every time, and as you're boiling, the water reduces, and it cooks down. So you just have to keep adding water and keep getting it back to a boil. So that's in there. The potatoes are good. The carrots are. Getting really soft, so are the potatoes. Give this a quick stir here. And you can just see this is this is just turning out really nice. Um, we add a little more salt and pepper to it. Um, now the meat just get in here. The meat is just so incredible. Let me pull a piece of this. Hey Justin, actually it was like 32. Because I forgot my six pack was on there. Okay. We can just see this meat and just really hot but it just falls apart but what happens is the meat just sucks in all of the all the uh, the whiskey flavor so it's incredibly and, and you know these are not tender pieces of meat and you saw how easy it, is. it just pulls apart how it's going to come right off the bone um, just it's separating on its own and see you can see here in the tail there's that bone marrow is just coming out and that's adding the, all this flavor in here so like I said you can't have an overcooked carrot it's never a bad thing so probably gonna add a little more more whiskey to this we're gonna add uh, some more water to it get it back to the boil and then we're gonna add our barley and I cheat. I use quick barley. It's really hard to find, you know, good, good hearty barley. So this works out really nice. Um, so by another hour, we should be eating. Yay! Okay. All right. All right. So we're back, and you can see the corned beef and cabbage is done. I have it on a real low, uh, just basically on a simmer. I mean, the carrots are nice. Everything's coming apart well. We'll stir that up in a second. You can see it. Um, now the oxtail soup, we've added some water to it. We're going to bring it back up a little bit to a boil again. It's on medium. But we're going to add one more cup. That's three total cups of Jameson's to this. We're going to add it now while it's not really boiling because we want that flavor to soak in. So Now what we're going to do Instead of making this really as a barley soup, I was uh, conferring with a very good friend of mine. What we're going to do is we're going to make the barley separate. separate. That was my very good friend. Um, we're going to make the barley separate. And then you put that in a bowl, and then you can ladle the oxtail soup in on top of it. And that way, people can really kind of choose what they want. Um, let's get some of this mixed up here. So you can see just how wonderful this is turning out. I mean, those potatoes are just breaking up. Let me pull out a, let me, let me literally just pull this out of here really quick. 
And because of the Jamesons, you can really just use that same spoon back and forth. It's really nice. Look at that. That's just pretty. And that's going to cut really nicely. You can see the tongs are just going to peel it apart. So, um, basically, barley is pretty simple. Bring to a roaring boil. And because uh, we're using the entire box, it was simple. It was four cups of water. And the box is two cups of oil, or uh, it's two cups of water. Uh, so we're going to whisk this in really fast, reduce the heat, let it simmer for about 15 minutes. And uh, the next time you see us, the spread's going to be laid out on the table, everything's going to be cut up, and the serving's going to be ready, all right? So, hope you enjoyed the video so far. Uh, it's going to be uh, both on Whiskey Obsession and the guy stuff through Cigar Obsession. And Are we going to actually post the recipe or no? No. It's a family secret. Hey, why are you going to... Well, never mind. good. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I just actually... Well, back all right, so... Uh, this is kind of the final segment. Um, we're serving. Uh, a very good friend Roy is carving up the uh, corned beef there. The oxtail soup is ready. Uh, barley's over here. We're going to actually transfer that into a serving bowl and uh, make another batch because I think six cups of barley is probably not enough. Oh, wow. Actually, that here is a sign. What a woman type of